Okay, our scripture today is 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 17 is our passage today. As Paul's writing to Timothy, he's um, giving him some instruction, some encouragement, and, um, and telling about a blessing that, that Timothy has and that we have today. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 10 through 17. Now you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, and perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all that all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, but evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So we see here in this passage of scripture that Paul commends Timothy uh, for his faith and his character. Um, he points out that Timothy has taken on these um, character qualities that Paul um, was, is trying to present to him. Um, he points out the reality of persecution if we're going to live a godly life. Um, someone's going to stand against you if, you if you make that stance for God. And Paul experienced that with many episodes of um, persecution in his life. He gives a few examples. Uh, Paul re-emphasizes re some warnings that um, he had given to Timothy about watching out for those who teach um, false doctrines and those who would lead people astray. And, uh, then, and then Paul reminds Timothy to keep on doing what he's been doing, just continue to stay faithful. Keep following God according to the truth of God's word is what Paul's telling Timothy to do. Timothy was taught the Old Testament um, as a child growing up, and then Paul taught Timothy about Christ and the new covenant that we have in Christ. So Paul wraps up this message that he's given to Timothy in this, in this section by reminding him of the blessings of the Bible, the blessings of Scripture. You know, I, I've been asked, and I, and I remember different times people would ask me that. They'd say something like, you know, can I be a Christian and not go to church? Um, can, I read, can I be a Christian but where I don't have to read my Bible? And I think about it, you know, and I, and I see where they're coming from, and, and one of the things I think of is, think of all the blessings that you're just missing by trying to approach just trying to follow Christ just by yourself. And the blessing of reading Scripture and, and the blessing of what Scripture does in our lives and the blessing of fellowship together. All these things are blessings that people, maybe they've had some experience or heard certain things or had certain preconceived ideas that thought they were more of a burden but it turns out we see, we recognize, as we're involved with this, of the blessing. And, uh, and we have blessings that come from Scripture, blessings from the Bible. And Paul shares those blessings with us to Timothy and then to us here in this passage of Scripture. So I want to take a look at what he says. First of all, he says, as a blessing of the Bible, he says, the Scriptures give you wisdom. The Scriptures give you wisdom. That's a blessing from the Bible that we can read the scriptures and have the wisdom of God. Verse 15, you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And that's what the scriptures do. Scriptures give us that wisdom of, of God's plan for our life. Now, in contrast to that, Paul has talked about the folly of those who are deceiving, those who are teaching false doctrines, those who are trying to lead people astray with their own ideas. He speaks of the folly of those things, but in Scripture, he says, we have that wisdom that comes from, from God. And that wisdom from God is, is, is great and it has a purpose for us. He says it leads to salvation. And that's why God has given us the Bible. He's given us scripture so that we can have his wisdom to understand his big plan so that we can um, understand that message of salvation 
and receive that message of salvation. Jesus even told the um, religious leaders when they were talking, he was talking about the scriptures in John 5, he says, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is these that testify about me, is what Jesus said. And so he's pointing out how we're able to have eternal life, and it's through Jesus Christ. Those scriptures are a witness of Jesus, and they are a witness of our eternal life that comes through Jesus Christ. And we, when we read and study the Old Testament, we start recognizing some of the pictures and some of the things that God sets up in the Old Testament to point us to focus on and what Jesus did and who he is so that we have our salvation through him as we read about him in the New Testament. So that is a blessing of the Bible. Now, the Bible is also a blessing because the scriptures are God-breathed. They're God-breathed. Um, that's what Paul says in verse 16. That's one of those verses that um, we're familiar with, we've probably heard before. I'm going to read just the first part, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is inspired by God. You've heard that. NIV, I think, really gets it a little bit more literal when it says all scripture is God-breathed. The scripture is the product of God's breath or God's spirit. It's the result of God's action. Those are these scriptures that we have, they're from God. They were given by God so that we would know the truth that God wants to present to us. Uh, the Bible says that heaven and earth is going to pass away, but these words will not pass away because they are the truth that comes from God. They're not just some church document. They're not just something that some people came up with um, or even just voted on or tried to, by themselves, put together what we have as a Bible. The scriptures, they are from God. Now, not that someone went into a cave and came out with this book, or all of a sudden this book comes floating down from heaven, but God has been working through people, and he inspired them to write prophets, teachers, um, those who are uh, leaders and, and uh, uh, those who are servants of God and workers of God in various ways, wrote these things down, wrote these experiences, these teachings, and these things have been put together, and we, have, and we have what we call the Bible. God inspired all of that. This was a work of God. That's why the words of Scripture are authoritative and reliable for us in our lives. That's why we can read the Scripture and we can find God's will because it teaches us the truth of God's will for us in our lives. So the scriptures are from God. As a result of that, they are a blessing to us. That is a gift that God has given to us that we can have. The Bible's a blessing. And there's one more blessing to look at this morning. The scriptures are profitable. They're profitable. Uh, that, again, let's look at that whole verse of um, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. The scripture is profitable. NIV says useful. It's useful for our lives to, to help in these areas. Profitable for teaching. God's word offers us direction in our lives. Um, we don't know how to direct our own steps in, in this spiritual walk with God and finding God, but God's word shows us how. Uh, we find The Bible says that we find that road that seems right to us. Uh, but its end is death. We need that road that God opens up, that's, the, that's God's path. Scripture teaches us about, about that. It directs us. Scripture is profitable for reproof, to convict one engaged in error. We may not like this part of the Bible. We don't like to read the Bible and be convicted of our sin, but that's part of the usefulness of Scripture because we're trying to understand God's will. We're trying to follow, uh, uh, live this life according to God's purpose. And so we need to realize when we have uh, made error. We need to realize when there's sin in our lives so that that can change. And the Bible convicts us to turn away from our evil ways. It gives us that insight into our lives about our sin and our weakness so that we can uh, do something about it. And in the process of all that, it, you know, God's word is calling us to live that more noble and righteous life, living that for God's purpose. Again, this is the hard part of it. We don't necessarily like this part of the scripture, 
but it's very important for us so that we can see our sin and know how we need to change. The scripture is profitable for correction, and that's setting us straight. So once we've been convicted of, of what we know that is wrong, we are able to turn from what's wrong into, and turn to what is right through this correction, setting us straight. That's what the scripture um, gives us to do. It's those guidelines so that we can become more godly. So again, it's not enough just to say what our problem is, but we need a way out of that problem. Scripture shows us that way out. It's those guidelines uh, so that we can live according to God's will. And the scripture is profitable for training in righteousness. Training includes that whole process that shapes us and stabilizes us, brings us to maturity um, in our lives. That maturity is righteousness, living um, and doing the right thing, having that right conduct um, in our lives. Uh, and that's what the scripture gives us. So all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, correction for training in righteousness. And then the next verse says, so that we may be adequate. Now, there's a funny word as we think about it today. Uh, adequate sounds mediocre, right? Uh, hey, how, would, how did you like my job? Well, it's adequate. You know, so we kind of look at it that way, but that's not, that's not how this word is used, and that's not what this word means here in this passage of Scripture. King James says perfect, that we might be perfect. Um, that's not the word for maturity. There's a word perfect in the Bible that we translate as maturity, uh, but this word uh, means that we are, that we are complete. Uh, we are completely prepared to do every good work that God has called us to do. And that's what the scripture is given, that's why the scripture is given to us, so that we are completely prepared to do the good work that God calls us to do. And, and you are, through scripture, through the Bible, through reading and studying and understanding what scripture says, the plan of God in your life, you are completely prepared to live for God, to serve God in your life. You're completely prepared to overcome sin and live in victory. It's been given to us. It's been given to us through God's word. And I wonder if we struggle in these areas of our life because we try to figure it out our way or try to do it our own, you know, through our own guidance instead of going to the word of God and allowing God's word to direct us and train us so that we can live that life of glory to God. So scripture, the Bible, it's a blessing from God. We need to read the Bible. We need to study the Bible. We need to allow the, we need to allow the word of God to change us. Uh, and so as we, as we think about things that we want to do in our lives, as, you know, as ways that we have an opportunity to serve, you might say, oh, I don't know that I'm prepared to do that. Well, go to the scripture and allow God's word to prepare you for those things so that you can be that servant of God that brings glory and honor to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for um, your word. Thank you for um, the blessings that you give us. I don't know if we always think about that um, as we open your word and, and, and we read, but it is a gift. It's a gift from you. And I pray, Father, that, um, that as we take this gift and we learn and grow, uh, that we would be prepared. We would be um, adequately, adequately, uh, perfectly uh, prepared to uh, to do what you want us to do, to live that life that you want us to live. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.